bacteria, this occurs rather than third. On this uh, oyster species are particularly receptive to these messages. up to your elbows. We you sing happy birthday three times. That makes sure that you have washed enough time to make sure that the bacteria is down to a safe level. You can never cure all bacteria, but you can bring it to a safe level uh, for food safety. I'm Chef Jim Ringler with the National Academy of Sciences. Basically, I'm going to be talking about how to reduce the amount of bacteria to keep food safe uh, for yourself and for a family. Let the water run. Take the towel, wipe your hands off, and then turn the faucet off. When you go into a grocery store, you want to make sure that it looks clean. Um, there's not a lot of debris on the floors and stuff, that the counters are wiped down and everything, that you don't see in the meat counter or the, the uh, poultry counter that there's a lot of blood or anything sitting around at the bottom of the, the rack and stuff like that. You want to make sure it looks good. Same thing with poultry, it should not have a smell. Same thing with fish. Fish, if it's fresh, does not have a smell. It should smell like the ocean. It shouldn't smell like fish. Food safety is pretty important since look at how many people are become ill, not only in the United States, but globally. And in this country, we have, I don't know, 76 million people, according to one report by the CDC, that are, uh, are affected each year, including 300,000 hospitalizations and roughly 5,000 deaths. We often go to store, buy food, uh, almost a day basis, so for us, it's a kind of having the most fresh product as possible. If you're buying fish, you want to make sure that the eyes are clear and touch the package if this fish should spring back. If it's chicken, it should be a bright color. If it looks red at the wings or anything like that, that means that the portrait has been frozen and it's not thawed out to the right temperature. For meat, you want to make sure that it's bright, red color, there should not be any kind of blue tinge around it or anything like that. For produce, you want to make sure that it's firm, that it's bright colored. Smell it. You can always tell by the smell if something is fresh. You know, we buy fresh food, but we try to take care of it, wash it, keep it in the fridge, keeping kitchen clean. And we are aware of sponge yuckiness, so we try to change our sponges. One of the things you need to be wary of is when you're dealing with foods, is using your kitchen utensils and sponges to clean up what you think is a mess or, or just trying to make sure that, that you don't transmit um, pathogens from one source to another. If you look at your sponge, and I've done this many times in, in, in classes that I teach, where kids go or students go to their respective kitchens and swab those sponges, they're really um, full of bacteria. And so that points out to them that it's very easy to spread from one part of your kitchen to the other. Even wiping down the counter or any type of utensil, you can be uh, transmitting uh, these microbes from one source to another. So if you use a, a knife, for instance, to cut up chicken and you swab it with your sponge and you think it's clean, you actually may be transmitting it from that particular countertop surface to the next thing you're going to use. So what I try to do is use sponges that are usually pretty clean, new, paper towels, which I know it may not be green, but in the long run may be healthier for you. And in some cases, even nuking or microwaving your sponge for 30 seconds, and it's a wet sponge, may reduce the bacterial population on that sponge. So when you're considering preparing foods, note that the chances of transmitting it from one source to another is pretty great. I refrigerate things before two hours, within an hour. I cover things, I wrap, I wash. I'm very careful about washing things. I, um, I throw things out if they've been in the refrigerator too long before they start to look like it. Basically, I don't keep a leftover more than a day because that food is set out and it's set out at your table in the restaurant. So you want to take the leftover use as fast as possible. Usually after a day, throw it away. Most of the time people forget about it and it's more than a day. Actually what I do is I keep a permanent marker with me all the time that at home that I'll put a date on it. So that way you remember that that's the date that you put it in the refrigerator. Same kind of thing for picnics. You want to make sure that your food is refrigerated all the time or packed on ice. 
the ice should be, you should put them in bags and not just have it sitting on top of the ice because with that, um, it can be contaminated with the ice. The water can get into the food and cause cross contamination. So you wanna make sure that everything is chilled and in separate containers. Um, same kind of thing, you cook your food, you have a thermometer so that you can make sure that the meat is cooked to the right temperature, especially when you're using charcoal and different types of way of heating stuff up at picnics or barbecues. Um, a lot of times you're just doing it by eye or by touch and you really should have a thermometer. Other thing for food safety is with your cutting board. You should do the three cycles. I'm Natalia Mika and I'm program associate at the Partnership for Food Safety Education. The Scrub Club is a program that was developed by NSF International and it helps teach children safe food handling messages. It focuses on hand washing. We have four safe food handling uh, messages. Clean, separate, cook, chill. Clean, you wanna wash hands and surfaces often. Separate, don't cross contaminate. Cook, you wanna make sure that all your food is cooked to a safe minimum internal temperature as measured with a food thermometer. And chill, you wanna make sure that you refrigerate all leftovers promptly, and that's within two hours, one hour if temperatures are 90 degrees or higher. Oh, he's back. He's sickening. He's bacteria, and he could be on your food. Unless you follow these four simple steps. Clean your hands and kitchen surfaces. Separate, don't cross-contaminate. Cook thoroughly. And chill promptly. So clean up your act, because if you want to stay healthy, you got to fight back.